Hello friends, this is Durga again from Technology Mentor slash IT University. Um, as part of MapReduce application development using Hadoop APIs, we have started from basic MapReduce applications and uh, went uh, very far to uh, to cover most of the building blocks of, of the MapReduce APIs or Hadoop APIs to, uh, to develop MapReduce based applications. And at this time, uh, one of the uh, we are talking about one of the building block which is counters. Um, I have already covered about the pre predefined counters how we can get, uh, retrieve that information either by using uh, command line interface or a simple Java program uh, building a tool object. And now we will see how we can actually uh, develop custom counters and get some insights about uh, the data quality that we are trying to process as part of our MapReduce applications. So before getting into the details, let us define the problem statement. Let us go through the data set we have. Raw data, less minus LTR. I'm going to one of the one of the files so if you look at this there are files um, which contain um, zero for all the stocks so there is some dates where there is no trading happened and uh, we want to capture how many such days are there as part of our uh, um, data set and we want to report um, at the end of the job uh, about any uh, about uh, the number of days uh, that are there as part of our data set which are not traded at all so um, and, and if, if you keep track of this you can uh, whenever you so it can happen um, um, because of several reasons it could be that uh, it, there is no um, the stock exchanges might not to open on that day and in some cases you might get invalid data completely invalid data um, because of uh, some goof up even though stock exchange is up and running on that day you might get uh, everything is zero because of some goof up by someone and uh, keeping track of uh, this information if uh, whether all the stocks are traded or not on a given day can give you a good insight and from there you can actually troubleshoot the issue whether stocks are traded on that day or not if the stocks are traded and if you still get zeros then you can say that there is some issue with the data set and you have to work with the source team to get the uh, to get your data set and uh, and uh, uh, reprocess uh, uh, the data that being said uh, it can have add some value it means you are trying to diagnose the problem you are trying to understand uh, um, the data quality and you can use instead of writing a full-blown application you can leverage the counters api build some custom counters and uh, uh, try to understand the problem so in this case where should we develop this if, if you develop if you try to do in the map side map side you will get only one record at a time so you have to keep track of all the days and see if um, if the stocks are traded on a given day or not or you can do it in the reduced side and reduced side uh, for our uh, top three stocks volume uh, application we have a composite key one is date and second one is volume and volume we are receiving in the descending order so if we can actually uh, focus on the reduced side and if the first record is zero that means all the rest of the data is zero you will not have the negative values um, even if you have the negative values if the first one is zero that means uh, stocks are not traded on the day or your data might have some issues so let's try to focus on the uh, reduced side and uh, try try to implement a counter and uh, uh, get this insight whether stocks uh, uh, whether how many days um, in our data set are actually uh, have uh, uh, 
no traded stocks or no traded days so let's go to the eclipse ide and uh, uh, here we don't need to write a counter application for this we just have to modify the existing counter application i will use this compass driver which i have showcased uh, for compression uh, sorry uh, yeah uh, we, we will use this stops three stops by volume there is no changes that needs to be done as part of the driver program there is no changes uh, that needs to be done as part of this mapper program because we are not trying to deal at mapper level um, uh, partitioners also we don't need to do the only place where we have to modify as we have decided to that we can easily get that information on the reduce side is our reducer class in this first you have to define a enum public enum no trade days and you have to create a um, constant no trade days okay and then so we uh, um, and then what we want to do is for if the first record is zero we we would like to log um, uh, or we would like to increment our counter that first um, uh, to get the number of no trade days and uh, uh, and we don't want to write the top three stocks to our files earlier we are writing irrespective of uh, 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 the stocks are traded on a given day or not so it will randomly pick the uh, first three stocks to show uh, the top three even though they are not traded at all so we can actually review the output which we have generated as part of our previous runs hadoop fs minus ls hit enter Hadoop FS minus LS hit enter oh, it is using snappy so let me go to the uncompressed ones rather than compressed ones let me see if i have any okay i don't have any at this time anyway uh, that's fine uh, um, let me run this uh, let me run the program which uses which uses uh, uncompressed driver raw data and hit enter it will take a while and then we will review the output then we will go uh, go on and develop the counter so now we have this data and here i have to say output raw hit enter and uh, you can see this uh, 25th of december it is displaying uh, some random three stocks with a zero so if the first stock is zero that means all the rest of them are either zero or lesser than that so we can ignore that day there is no need to uh, keep track of this as long as we have that metric that uh, these many days are not traded or the data you know, represents that uh, it is not traded that is more than enough you don't need to write it into the uh, output files so for that we have to use this um, uh, um, for that we need to write a if condition before uh, uh, going ahead and writing into hdfs and uh, here we have to say if so our input key have two fields the first one is date and the second one is 
the volume and uh, when we get the input in reducer uh, it is grouped by the date and uh, the data is uh, in, in descending order by volume so as long as we say if input key dot get second which is of type long is equal to zero we just need to uh, increment this counter and uh, 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 yeah and uh, break break out of the for loop so let me put the break so if the uh, second is zero then we don't want to write it to the hdfs file so for that you need to use the context object so context object has a method called get counter and uh, it takes the enum name so our enum name is so our enum name is not rate this dot so this this you can visualize it as group name enum is a group and then you can have uh, multiple uh, counter names and uh, we have to do this and then we have to increment with the value you want to increment every time uh, you uh, you want to get this counter ticking so now our program is uh, uh, run that's it you don't need to do anything else what it will do is if the uh, the first record uh, second uh, uh, second field of the key is zero then we just want to uh, increment our counter and get out of that loop and move on to the next uh, uh, next key to process our data as part of the reduce function that being said let me build this run as maven install and uh, here i need to do scp SSH okay now uh, I just need to run that program whatever I have ran earlier and see whether we will see this new counter ah oh, man why it is happening like this I didn't do it I didn't change anything but still it is changing apply yes okay let me recompile it and uh, uh, copy it and then i will run it and now let me run this program so now the job is submitted let it run and then we will review the output so now you can see that you have 20 no trade days and uh, this is the counter uh, which uh, is being used to get this uh, counter information that being said now you can go back and uh, uh, go to counter uh, testing and actually you can read that information also here actually uh, we will use the same counter testing program and here let us uh, give our uh, give the group name as or enum name as this one and uh, counter name as this one and hit enter what happened why it did not
okay for this to work i need to uh, have a higher level class here i didn't have it as a higher level class instead i have it as nested class i think for that reason it is not working if i move it out and create a separate class Let me create a new package here. New package dot enums and refactor move nyc dot enums. Okay. Oh, it moved the entire stuff. Okay, let me move it and let me refactor the code and then we will review. So let me right click new enum and I want to name it as no trade days. And here I want to paste it. Okay, and in the reducer, I have to say import. Okay, now let me recompile it. Exit SCP. SSH and type the password Hadoop here and then run the program again. Now you can see this here. Now let me run our counter testing program. I hope it works this time. If not, I might be goofing up somewhere. No trade S yes. and hit enter. Yeah, something is wrong. It should show noted this uh, as 20. Oh, okay. The issue is I am actually using the wrong job. I am not changing the job ID. That's why it is showing it as 0. Huh. So here I have to say, I have to change the job ID to 46. Okay. It was not about the refactoring, it was about the job ID, incorrect use of the job ID. You can even use the previous method also, uh, wherein you have the nested class. Anyway, that being said, uh, this is it about uh, uh, predefined or user defined counters. And now we will see the uh, dynamic counters also. And as you see, we can actually get our custom counters also using the APIs. So you can actually write these uh, uh, custom programs wherein you can get uh, different counters and uh, get the ratios out of it for example in this case you can get number a uh, total number of days that are processed by using the reduce input groups which is a predefined counters which is 522 and uh, then uh, the days where there is no trading uh, trading happened is 20. so if you want to get the ratio of the data set you have processed um, which which can uh, uh, so the number of days uh, on which trading does not happen to the number of days in your data set then it is just 20 divided by 522 and both the information is available as part of your counters you can write count uh, the uh, counter program such as counter testing to get both the metrics and divide 20 with 522 and will you will get the uh, number of uh, you, you will get the rate uh, of which number of days that are not traded as part of your data set that being said we will move on to the uh, dynamic counter it is also very straightforward to implement when we actually go to this reducer and when you actually type let me comment this out when you actually type context dot get counter 
there are two parameters one is uh, uh, this one and second one is this one so you can actually use and the second one uh, the first one takes the enum second one takes the string so here you can actually say not read this which is the group name and you can say the counter name as no underscore trade underscore days and then you can say increment one okay now let me rebuild it so that is dynamic counter we we are not using the existing enum we are just creating counter on the fly so in some cases if you want to uh, uh, if, if you want to get certain information and, uh, in dynamic fashion then you can uh, uh, use this method okay let us see so now it is compiled and I need to SCP So the only difference between the uh, user defined counter and the dynamic counter is that in user defined counter you will have enums and drawback of enums is that you can only um, define it com at compile time but if you want to do it at runtime then you can actually uh, use the second approach where there will not be enum at compile time and you can pass these parameters you can pass these parameters at runtime so if you want to say uh, so if, if you if you want to see um, all the uh, all the data sets which are under certain value and if you want to do the counter for example um, if, if there is a issue with the data itself so some stocks might have negligible number like um, uh, one or two for few of the stocks and rest of the stocks might be zero that means there could be some issue with the data set itself and uh, if you think that below thousand um, does not ma make sense for the top stock and if you get, want to get the count for each of zero to thousand then you can actually use this approach and here you can define like this input key dot get second dot to string okay because it's a primitive type it is complaining so yeah I can pass directly like this also I think no it is still complaining so I have to say new string okay I have to build the long object first and then I have to say to string okay now what will happen the counter name will be zero itself like that if you have uh, if you want to keep track of um, uh, or if you want to increment the number of stocks which uh, which is under certain value for each and every value uh, in this case if you want to capture less than or equal to thousand okay so for each of the value uh, you will get a dynamic counter and that will be incremented and that will be displayed so let let me compile this one rather than uh, and run this one rather than running the um, previous uh, pr uh, program that is compiled with which is hard coded now i am doing scp Hadoop and then SSH Hadoop and now I can actually run my Hadoop uh, run my MapReduce application using Hadoop jar so in this case I am running top 3 stocks by volume and hit enter So now you can see that 0 equal to 20 there are no other days where the top stock is under 1000 which is good 
but if you have those kinds of detail and, and those kinds of stocks that means there is some issue with the data probably and you might have to troubleshoot the issue further so this is how the uh, custom counters works uh, you can either uh, um, predefine the counters using enum or you can also use the dynamic counters and here if you want to get this information um, using um, map red command i think it is a little bit uh, challenging it uh, you you might not be able to get this uh, because uh, there is no class associated with it um, it is generated at runtime but it, still you can you know, leverage it and you can actually um, uh, troubleshoot certain uh, diagnose certain issues and, um, that are related to the quality of your data that being said uh, that's it about counters we have covered both uh, predefined counters as well as cu custom counters extensively as part of previous video and this video and i hope you are enjoying the content on my channel if you like this video please click on the like button and if you want to provide uh, feedback or ask any technical question leverage the comment section of this video and if you have not subscribed to my channel yet please do so you will have a lot more content over time thank you bye